Um, my name is Natasha Poggio. I am a designer and educator at the Hartford Art School at the University of Hartford. And I'm thrilled to be here with you all and to share some of the things that I love the most, which is um, using design to help and empower communities and uh, help them thrive. So I have many interests as an academic and they have to do with many things that have been discussed at this uh, conference today. And the one thing that they have most in common is that they thrive in making the world a better place. It's about environment, design thinking, social entrepreneurship, um, working collaboratively, using our uh, expertise to um, do the best that we can to help others. So in 2008, um, I started this program at the Hartford Art School that um, provides students the opportunity to work with communities and nonprofit organizations and help them uh, find solutions to solve the problems that they might face. This is um, a different type of program and um, the idea is that they create these responsible, sustainable solutions. The traditional design model of education is we have a problem, like a hypothetical project, let's say working for a consumer, uh, producing a packaging project, and then we apply the theory, learn in the class. But in Design Global Change, what I do with my students is use that theory and we work collaboratively and use participatory design methods to um, find solutions to these communities in need. It's about like designing uh, less things and creating more change. And I know we're talking about Hartford, but uh, as the previous speaker mentioned, you know, it's about also looking at the global perspective and experience. So uh, I give a little bit of a glimpse of uh, global uh, experience to my students since I, you can tell by my accent, I am born uh, in Argentina and I've been here for many years. But that's not enough. So in order to make them like really feel the idea of uh, global travel, I have taken them over 16,000 miles away to India and Kenya, like the previous speaker. I don't do this by myself, obviously. Um, we cannot just work alone. So uh, like the honeybees that we all know they're threatened right now, um, I work collaboratively. And I use this network that we have at the University of Hartford of uh, colleagues that also care about uh, creating a positive impact. They come from uh, social sciences, uh, from engineering, architecture, business, um, different areas of the university. And why do we do this? It's because we care about these important issues, access to education, access to wellness, access to infrastructure, um, sustainable development, technologies, um, collaborate, collaborating with these organizations, and most importantly, one of the things that we have noticed uh, that is the most striking is access to clean water. I don't know if you know, but clean water, or actually contaminated water, is the second biggest killer of children in the world. That's huge. And water should be a fundamental, and actually is a fundamental right. We just need to make that happen for everyone. So the story takes us to Abepur. Abepur is a village in northern India. It's about 1,200 people. And um, in 2008, the Engineer Without Borders student chapter at the University of Hartford traveled there and worked to install solar panels to uh, power a water pump. And that water pump, uh, you know, filled the tanks, those tanks over there in the picture. That's the original team, the one that uh, implemented this project. And that was awesome. And it provided like clean, safe water for this primary girls school. But as many of you might know, about 50% of water related projects actually fail. And about 5% of those have problems being revisited. And then one, you know, 1% might not have like any long-term uh, monitoring. So how do we prevent this from happening? I saw an opportunity and I just grabbed it to talk to the professor working on this project. And I proposed to him to do an educational campaign on sanitation using, you know, the, the power of my students' abilities to create designs. 
So we team up with them. We uh, learn about different issues that have to do with cultural symbols and religious symbols uh, appropriate for India. We also um, did a lot of research. And then the students came up with beautiful renderings and um, ideas for this campaign that will uh, convey the principles of safe uh, water, cleanliness, sanitation, um, share, and respect. Share is because we wanted the different um, parts of the community to share the water. Even when India has abolished uh, the caste system, um, they're still in place in many rural areas. So we wanted people to know that you know, they were equal. And uh, we also wanted to respect these new technologies that had been in place because they were very expensive and if they were not maintained, you know, that could be a problem and definitely will like, damage the access to this uh, water. So um, these are like other designs that the students have created. Overall, we had like 11 different projects. The students work on these in teams and um, over the course of a whole semester. And then we have the, the privilege of um, working together with engineers. They took these designs with them in one of their trips in the summer and they showed it to the community villagers and Together, they chose the one campaign, uh, or like the, one, the campaigns that were the most effective in conveying their values, that resonate the most to them. So taking that feedback from those different projects, we put together a new redesign and proved uh, campaign that we call Water for India. And we created these banners that you see, and um, each one of them convey one of these principles. And I was very, very privileged to uh, receive funding uh, to implement this project and actually to take students along with me to India, which was the most uh, amazing experience. And um, my team was there and they, they brought these uh, banners printed in vinyl so they would be hung at the, at the uh, school, the primary school. Also, we brought another set for the uh, nonprofit organization we work with, which is called Navajori India Foundation. And we created coloring books. The coloring books are mostly for the kids, so they kind of learn about these principles in a non-verbal language, because we didn't have at the time the ability to access you know, Hindi translations, so we um, came up with everything was pretty much visual. And uh, we had t-shirts that the kids loved, and you know, were even like they were like too 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 big for them. And finally, we um, came up with the idea of painting a mural. And the whole point of the mural was to make something visual that the whole village, not just the kids at the school, would see. So over the course of six days, um, we um, paint the mural. Kids help, engineers help, teachers help, everyone actually helped. It was pretty awesome. And um, this is the final result. And the, the mural conveys the principles of sanitation, um, keeping the place clean, you know, like trash and washing your hands and sharing and respect. This project had a positive impact because not only like having access, direct access to clean water through the technologies provided, but also because the kids, by ac having that access, they wouldn't get sick as often. And by not getting sick as often, they will stay in school. And by staying in school, they will learn more. Therefore, their grades had improved. And by grades improving, they were actually able to pass to the next level. So this project started in 2008. Over the course of these past years, we have seen a great improvement and attendance. Um, and also, you know, like kids go from primary school to high school, which was not seen before. And uh, uh, over the course of the year, we continue expanding this campaign and we added more materials and more visuals and we got more help and you know, got materials translated, which was awesome. Something that happened that we didn't expect, you know, we went there with this idea of helping with the water, was that the primary girl, the high school director asked us to work on a gender equality project. And it was challenging because it's not as easy to say, you know, uh, wash your hands as, you know, we are all equal women and men. So um, my team that now became uh, former students and colleagues of mine worked together over the course of another semester outside of class to come up with this project 
that end up being uh, a set of cars, like playing cars, but they were role cars. And each one portray um, different roles that the community play. The, the women in the community, we notice a big discrepancy. Women do most of the household uh, chores. They work in the farms. They also take care of the water. They um, take care of you know, uh, preparing things for fire. Um, and you also see them like take, taking care of their children, washing the animals. Um, the men do more a different type of labor. They are drivers, they're the barbers, the, you know, they sell the goods that they produce from the farms in the, in the streets. Um, but also, because of like, more attention to male education, they can stay in school longer, they go to college, and they become computer engineers, or they become doctors, or other careers. But we don't see that in the women. So what we decided to do is expand our cars and made like about 30 of them. And they portray different roles that you could achieve with education. Uh, we tested this, and this is a very important part. In design, it's not about just coming up with this idea. We need to test it and see if it actually works. So we traveled again, and uh, we tested with the lo local organization. And they gave us feedback, and the high school girls also gave us feedback. And we added roles that were like things that will spark conversations. So you could be a student, a high school student, and then become a college student. And then you could become a doctor, or a poet, or a writer, or a scientist. You could even be like a prime minister, like Indira Gandhi, or like the first female astronaut from India. We um, thought that you know, the cars were not enough, so we came up with like, an idea for like, a teacher's guidebook that will facilitate the conversations with the teachers. And and then the kids really, really like it. But you know, we are talking about uh, Hartford, that's the, the global um, perspective, and now bringing back. So we also have worked with the community here, and we came up with a, a mural, a non-violence mural on Albany Avenue. My students work with the, the community members. We, we met with um, uh, Kingian non-violence uh, peace builders. We received education training, and the mural showcased the principle number two, the beloved community is the framework for the future. We met with youth, with local youth. We prototyped with design. We presented the designs to them. And um, we work very tirelessly for 16 hours to come up with this during Thanksgiving time in 2010. Even the police officers driving by the street came by, came by and you know, left their mark with a paintbrush. It was really, really an amazing experience. And the students were thrilled. They left with this sense of achievement and accomplishment. And that you don't need to go really far in order to show this positive change and impact. And these friendships and um, sense of pride that we develop show that you know, it is indeed like a small group of people can actually change the world. You just need to take the initiative and start it. And as a designer and educator, I strongly believe the importance of you know, like creating these opportunities for students. We are more interconnected than ever in this world. And you know, we need to do something uh, to show that art and design is really a catalyst for positive social change. So to leave you here is um, with the words of Franklin D. Roosevelt, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. Thank you.